let's go back to this picture. Basically, during the BFR algorithm, we'll maintain a discard set or VS, which is here. And VS contains a lot of clusters. We'll also maintain a compression set or CS, which is here. And CS contains a lot of mini clusters, but they're not assigned to any cluster yet. We'll also maintain a retain set or RS, which is here. They're just some isolated outliers. And each time we process a new trunk of data from the disk, we'll just update the statistics of clusters in VS and the statistics of mini clusters in CS. And we may also adjust RS. And after processing the last trunk, we will merge CS and RS into VS. We left up a few implementation details. The first one is how do we decide if a point is close enough to a cluster that will add the point to that cluster? And the second question is, how do we decide whether two compressed sets, CS, deserve to be combined into one? For the first question, we need a way to decide whether to put a new point into a cluster and discard it. And BFI algorithm suggests two ways. The first option is that we can compute the Mahalanobus distance or M distance between a point and a, and a centroid. And if the M distance is less than the threshold, we can, that means they're close enough and we can put this new point to the cluster. The second option is that we can calculate the likelihood of the point belonging to the current nearest centroid. This is because we assume that they are normally distributed. So we can calculate the likelihood inside this Gaussian distribution or normal distribution. And if the likelihood is high, we can then put this new point into the cluster. So what is M distance? You can think of M distance as a normalized version of Euclidean distance from the centroid. For point X1 through XD and centroid C1 through CD, know that this is one point and this is the vector representing the centroid and we'll have D dimensions. And in the first step, we'll just normalize in each dimension using this equation. It's just the distance between Xi of and Ci and it's divided by sigma i. And sigma i is the standard deviation of points in the cluster in the i-th dimension. And we'll take the sum of the squares of yi and we'll take the square root, and this is the M distance. The intuition here is that if the sigma is smaller, that means the point in that dimension is more crowded, which means that the effective distance would be larger. For example, if you look at the first dimension of this green cluster, you can see that its standard deviation is actually quite small. That means this, the points in this dimension is actually much more crowded, meaning that the effective distance should be larger. So how is the M distance related to the likelihood of a normal distribution? If clusters are normally distributed in D dimensions, then after the transformation, for points within one standard deviation sigma, the M, M distance would happen to be smaller or equal to the square root of D. That means about 68% of the points of the cluster will have an M distance smaller than square root D. So where does this 68% come from? If you look at a normal distribution here, and if you look at the area under the curve, you can see that actually about 68% of the area is between negative sigma and sigma. And similarly, if you look closer, you can find that about 95% of the area is actually between negative two sigma and two sigma. So that means similarly, 95% of the point of the cluster will have a M distance smaller than two square root B. So basically you can just accept the point for cluster 
if a m distance is actually smaller than some threshold, for example, two standard deviations, which is two times square root b. For the second question, should two CS subclusters or mini clusters be combined? We can just compute the variance of the combined mini clusters. And remember that we already have the statistics of this mini cluster. We have M, SUM, and SUM SQ. And that allows us to make that calculation much, much more quickly. We can just sum up the M, the SUM, and SUM SQ of these two mini clusters. And we use the equation we discussed before to calculate their average and their variance. And we can combine them too if the combined variance is be below some threshold. Of course, you can, you can have many alternatives. For example, if you want to treat dimensions differently, then you can just calculate the variance in some of the dimensions and ignore the others. Or you can also consider density of the combined clusters rather than the variance. 